Hey friends, welcome back to my kitchen. I have a really fun recipe experiment and review for you today. The recipe is for carnivore mashed potatoes. And I know some of your brains just exploded. Those words don't belong together. And honestly, I have been burned too many times by people saying that cauliflower mashed potato recipes taste just like mashed potatoes, that I'm, you know, withholding my judgment until I taste these mashed potatoes. The recipe is by Chris Cooking Nashville and he is here on YouTube and he has started sharing some recipes that are just outside the box. I love it when people come along with like fresh eyes on ingredients that we've been using forever. He just has such a different way of looking at ingredients and putting them together in just a unique way. So I'm really excited to try some of his recipes and we will see if they're as good as he says. I will have a link down in the description to his recipe video and in his recipe video in the description of that video is the written out recipe. I copied it and printed it out so I have it here. I'm gonna try to follow it as exactly as possible and I'm gonna just let myself just barely dare to hope that I'm gonna get something similar to a mashed potato that's better than cauliflower mashed potatoes, although that bar is pretty low. So here are all of the ingredients. Everything you can see except for the white pepper is considered a carnivore ingredient, although there are those very militant carnivores that say anything that resembles something that's not meat is not carnivore. But then I wanna ask them why they didn't just walk out in the field and like take a bite out of a cow because uh, any kind of like processing of the animal is unnatural. You should just go eat it right out of the field if you wanna be a real carnivore. So for ingredients, we have salt, sour cream, cream cheese, butter, fresh mozzarella, and white pepper of course, some Parmesan cheese, egg whites, some heavy cream, some gelatin, which we will do something very interesting with that I'm excited to experiment with, and some egg white powder. So back to the gelatin. Um, he has regular beef gelatin in the recipe as well as toasted beef gelatin. And I have noticed in my experimenting that gelatin can get crispy. And that's one of the ingredients that really makes my carnivore breading recipe really, really delicious and like keep its crisp is the gelatin in the recipe. And so when he said that he used toasted beef gelatin in this recipe, it kind of blew my mind. And I'm super excited to make it and to use it and experiment with, you know, all the possibilities of toasted beef gelatin. So the first thing I'm gonna have to do is toast up some gelatin. A big thank you to Element for sponsoring today's video. Element is a huge supporter of my channel and they really do make it possible for me to bring you all of these crazy kitchen experiments. So Element is an electrolyte supplement that I use every single day. It helps me stay hydrated. It helps me feel my best. I give it to my family. My kids enjoy it. They always are asking for it if they feel a little bit under the weather or if it's a hot day and they need that little bit of extra hydration. The ingredients are just really, really clean and I feel great about using it myself and giving it to my family. It also tastes really, really good. And right now they have their grapefruit salt flavor available. This is a seasonal flavor for the summer and it just got released. So if you've been wanting to try that or stock up on that, do it now because it does sell out fast. I can say from firsthand experience that this is absolutely delicious. I think it might be my current favorite fruity flavor. Obviously there's the chocolate flavors that are good in hot drinks, which is a totally different animal. But as far as the refreshing summertime fruity flavors, I think this is my favorite. Right now Element is offering a special deal to my viewers. If you use my link, the one up here on the screen or down in the description, you can get a free sample pack of all eight of their regular flavors for free with any order. So if you wanna stock up on the grapefruit salt, make sure you use that link and then you will also get the sample pack of all of their regular flavors. To get this deal, just go to drinkelement.com slash indigo. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash indigo. Place your order and you will get your sample pack. So he just said to toast the gelatin until it turns like a golden color. He said it doesn't smell good, doesn't taste good, but it's the secret ingredient for the recipe. I'm gonna do a little extra because I want some left to play with uh, for other things. So I'm just throwing a bunch in there. I have my stove set to medium high heat. We'll see how that goes.
Okay, I'm thinking this is looking pretty good. It took about maybe five minutes to get to this point. It's still getting brown and I don't want it to burn. So I'm gonna turn off the heat. And that looks that looks toasted, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna call that good. Hopefully that's hopefully that's right. All right, there is my toasted beef gelatin. Let's move on to the actual first step of the recipe. First thing is to melt the butter over medium low heat. All right, butter is melted, and I guess the key to this is to keep the heat low so you don't like brown the eggs, but I'm gonna go ahead and add in the egg whites as well as the uh, salt and optional uh, garlic powder, which I forgot to mention in the ingredients list. Obviously that ingredient is also not carnivore, but it is optional. Half a teaspoon of salt, an eighth of a teaspoon of garlic powder, or I am using granulated garlic. Now I'm just gonna cook this uh, slowly until the eggs are like dry and crumbly, uh, cooking off as much liquid as possible. Obviously there's gonna be some butter fat left that won't cook off, but as much of the water as possible and you just wanna have it as dry as you can get it. So I'm imagining this is the most time consuming part of the recipe. Um, I've been going for about 20 minutes um, and it's still, I still feel like there's more liquid than there should be. And so as I'm standing here stirring, I'm contemplating ways to make this a little bit more hands off, thinking like um, dehydrator or a real low temp oven to try to just, you know, have it be not something that I have to stand and stir all the time. That's what I'm contemplating. Um, but I'm gonna let this go a little bit longer because I still feel like there's puddles and I wanna try to get it a little drier. All right, I think we're getting close. All in all, it took about 25 to 30 minutes um, to get to this point. There's still some, some seeping, but I feel like it's mostly butter fat at this point. It's hard to tell though. That could still have some water in it. But you can kind of hear the sound change when the water um, all cooks off. It kind of gets like a, a louder, higher pitched bubbling sound, if that makes sense. All right, I'm gonna call it there and get going on the next step. This is all of my dairy that I'm adding in, the cream cheese, the Parmesan cheese, the fresh mozzarella, and apparently Fresh is important, regular shredded mozzarella will not work, and sour cream. And you notice I'm not giving exact measurements on all of these because I want you to go over to Chris's uh, video and I want you to get the recipe from him. Definitely want him to get the views and all the credit for this recipe. Adding all of this to my Vitamix blender here. Next, I'm gonna add the toasted beef gelatin the untoasted beef gelatin, and the white pepper. There we go. Now I'm gonna be adding my egg mixture on top here, which will take some doing. Oh no! Oh goodness sakes. This pan is too heavy for this. Heading over to the Vitamix. Okay, I'm gonna start out on low and use my pusher as needed. Turn it up a little bit. And I have my cream here so I can add it if I need to, just to get it to blend. But I'm supposed to add as little as possible. So the recipe says that the mixture should flow uh, readily, readily flow into the blades and blend. I'm not getting it to be able to do that and I feel like I've already added more than two or three tablespoons of the heavy cream so not sure if I should keep adding more cream because he says to use as little cream as possible um, or if I should call it good because it 
it's pretty blended, I think. Um, trying to decide, let's look at it here. So that's, that's what it looks like. I feel like it's so hot that it's cooking the eggs more. And maybe that's just because I have a Vitamix and I'm afraid that if I keep cooking the eggs more, it'll keep getting thicker and thicker. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking I should just call it good right there. And it does look like mashed potatoes, let me tell you. So now I'm supposed to add one to two tablespoons of the egg white powder. So I'll do about a tablespoon and a half, split the difference. Try to get this mixed in here. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call that good and we're gonna do a taste test. All right, so right out of the blender, you can see this is like the texture. So like, if you knew that there were eggs in it, you could tell it's kind of got that egg white jiggle, if you know what I mean. Um, and again, I, I wonder if the Vitamix, um, since it's such a high pow powered blender, if it cooked the potatoes um, a little bit more, and so I have more of that egg uh, texture than you would if you, if you didn't blend it so high. So I'm thinking, if you do have a Vitamix, um, try not blending it all the way on high, just so you don't continue to like cook the protein. I made Mississippi pot roast last night for dinner and I was so excited to try this recipe today because I wanted to eat leftovers with mashed potatoes. So, all right, I'm going to uh, plate this up here. Give it a little well, if I can. Some gravy on my mashed potatoes. So that's what they look like on the fork, still steaming. The flavor is very good. Like it's got the cheesy and the butter. The butter is definitely very strong flavor in there. Definitely does not taste like I'm eating egg whites, um, like scrambled egg whites. There is something a little bit different about it than mashed potatoes, but there is like that starchy feel at the end, like the stick to your ribs type feeling. I don't know if I can describe it accurately. Um, they're very good. They are very good. And I am very interested in trying this again with um, my blender on a lower setting and see if I can get the texture a little bit creamier because I think it's supposed to be a little bit creamier. Just from what I saw on his video, I do think that the extra cooking that the Vitamix does because it goes to such high speeds, it actually does cook things. Um, I think that affected the texture. So. I'm really excited to try it again and and like the flavor plus a more creamy texture is going to be phenomenal. I definitely see the possibilities for this recipe to be endless. So when I make recipes, my favorite like way to make recipes is to make technique recipes. So instead of, you know, making a sandwich recipe, I want to perfect a bread or instead of making a wrap recipe where I'm going through all the individual ingredients of, you know, what's in the sandwich or the wrap, I want to figure out the perfect wrap recipe. And as soon as you have those things, you have a bread, you have a wrap, you have a mashed potato, you have a rice, then you can use it in infinite recipes. And I feel like Chris is on the same wavelength with me on that one. His recipes are, you know, like these basics. Once you get them down, once you get a good recipe for them, you can just take it and do anything with it. And that's what I love. So I will definitely have the link to this video and recipe down in the description. Go check it out. Go subscribe to Chris and see what insane, crazy thing he does next. Um, I'm sure it'll be very exciting. Here's my tip for breaking up the egg whites. Instead of using a spatula, use a potato masher and how appropriate to use a potato masher.
for a faux mashed potato recipe. It works wonderfully. So this is take two. You can see it still has a little bit of that egg white jiggle to it, um, but it's definitely creamier than the first one. I didn't put the blender above about uh, seven on the scale. It goes all the way up to 10 and then it has the max switch that you can flip to make it go like the highest. So I only put it up to about a seven. I was never able to get it to um, have the mixture flowing freely over the blades. I'm not sure exactly why. I added the cream up to the three tablespoons and I didn't feel like I should add any more. And since I did have a pretty good texture after I did that, I decided not to add the egg white powder uh, because I thought it would dry it out too much. I wanted it to be more creamy like this. So um, I'm gonna call this good. There's a quick comparison in the texture. You can see this one, um, the first one I did was a little more crumbly and dry. This one a little bit more creamy. In the effort of full disclosure, I'm gonna include my kids' reactions to this for those of you that are interested in seeing if non-keto people might be fooled. Okay, Charity, do you like mashed potatoes? Yeah. I have something for you to try, and I want you to tell me how it compares to mashed potatoes. I'm scared. Don't be scared. It's delicious. All right, here we go. What is it? I'm not gonna tell you, you just have to Think mashed potato. Uh -huh. think, think mashed potato. What is it? <laughs> you need to tell me what you think of it first. I don't really like it. You don't? Why not? It's like egg. <laughs> it does. <laughs> but does it taste like delicious egg? Not really. If you were on a carnivore diet and you were not able to eat potatoes, would that be a good substitute? Would you tolerate it if you couldn't eat regular potatoes? No. <laughs> I just not eat anything like that. <laughs> okay. You just eat meat? Yeah. Okay. So do you like mashed potatoes? Yeah. All right, I'm going to give you a taste of something and you tell me how it compares to mashed potatoes, okay? Okay. You have some on your lip. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you don't like it? Why not? It does not taste as good as mashed potatoes at all. <laughs> oh, really? What does it taste like? Uh... It's like something I had before, but I don't know what it is. It's kind of like scrambled eggs, but also not. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are eggs in it. All right, so if you were on a keto carnivore diet and you couldn't have potatoes, real potatoes, would you eat these instead? I'll just not have potatoes. <laughs> okay.